do. There's one last, I talked about reference angles. Um, and as I was reading your book, I realized that reference angles are explained in 10.2. So let's go ahead and do uh, define reference angles and do a few examples. Uh, and today, uh, I'm going to lecture just on YouTube because my road is very icy. And yesterday it was very snowy and hard to make it down. And today is very icy. Or this morning it's very icy and probably impossible to make it down. Uh, so that means your today's Thursday. Your quiz is going to be Friday tomorrow, and uh, it will be what we finished uh, on yesterday's lecture video, which is uh, we basically finished all through ten point two. Uh, so your quiz will be ten one to ten two tomorrow. So reference angles. So we'll start with the definition. And I think we need to zoom in a bit more. So reference angles. So if you're given a theta Theta, the reference angle is we use theta bar, so it's theta with a bar on top of it. And this is the uh, smallest positive angle back to the back to the x-axis. So uh, it's relatively easy to understand. Um, it can, as long as you have common denominator, it's usually not terribly hard to uh, compute some of these. So we're gonna do some examples. Uh, but the reason why this is important, this property that all trig functions have, so any trig function, and uh, we'll just give, we'll just say if G Let's say G is a trig function, so it could be sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent, <clears throat> any of those uh, G could represent right here. And for any angle, it's always true that G of theta equals, it's G of the reference angle. The only thing you have to worry about is choosing plus or minus. And the plus or minus depends on what quadrant and what trig function you're using. Depends on quadrant and particular trig function. So what I mean by that is cosine is negative in quadrant two and three. So if you think of your unit circle, if we're dealing with cosine, cosine would be negative in two and three. Just think of, uh, here we have negative, oh, it looks like a plus. So we got negative comma positive. Here we have negative comma negative, positive, 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 negative. So depending on what quadrant you're in and what trig function you're using, so for example, if our point's up here, we had a cosine, cosine is negative. And if we're here, still in quadrant two, and we have a sine function, our sine function will be positive. So that's what I mean, it depends on what quadrant you're in, and depends on what trig function you are using. Uh, tangent is a little tricky because it's uh, y over x, and if one of them is negative, tangent will be negative in quadrant two. It's a little tricky, tangent is positive in quadrant three because negative divided by negative will be positive. So tangent is a little bit sneaky. So let's go ahead and do uh, some, we'll just do some reference angle computations first. So we'll start with theta equals, uh, let's do, we'll start out easy, we'll do two pi over three. Find theta bar. 
So it's usually best to graph out where your angle is. So unit circle is right here. And two pi over three, well, we're in thirds, so we better really be in thirds. So normally I would label this as pi right here, but in thirds, this is three pi over three. So I wanna go two thirds of the way to three pi over three. So you could mark off, that's about one third and two thirds. So I don't really need that one third marking. Just put it down to get my spacing. So the spacing is pretty obvious. So we're just using that angle right there. That's our two pi over three right there. In blue, I'm gonna do reference angle. So reference angle goes from our current angle and it's the shortest to the x-axis, shortest positive to the x-axis. So we know three pi over three is all the way over. The angle we originally had is two pi over three. It's a little hard to label because I'm gonna to wanna to use the first quadrant. Uh, let me just, not the best place to label two pi over three, uh, but that's uh, our angle, our big angle right here. So our remaining angle is just one pi over three. It's what's missing to go two pi over three over to three pi over three, you need to go one pi over three. All right, once you have your reference angle, redraw your reference angle in standard position. So here's where pi over three should be drawn. Now you need the first quadrant of the unit circle and all those values. The specific one we need is one half is our x value and through, uh, square root three over two is our y value. Sorry, I just woke up. I'm trying to finish this so I can upload it on my slow internet connection and then YouTube can process it uh, before class starts. So there's our point. Now the point we actually want over here is very similar. The only difference is x goes from being positive to negative. So x is the first coordinate. So we have negative one half comma square root three over two. So there is our x, y value. And so we computed our reference angle. Let's go ahead and uh, do a trig function. Let's find, we'll go, uh, let's do some of the reciprocal ones. Let's go with secant of two pi over three. So secant two pi over three, just using our uh, trig function of the angle theta is plus or minus trig function of reference angle. So using that, secant of two pi over three is plus or minus secant of reference angle pi over three. We can get fancy and use our blue pen for our reference angle secant pi over three. All right, what is secant pi over three? Secant one over cosine, which is one over x. So we get one over, our x value is one half. Make sure you know how your fraction is grouped. And that reduces to uh, one times two over one, which is plus or minus two. All right, we have to decide plus or minus now. So secant of pi over three is uh, positive two, but we want secant in quadrant two. So secant is really uh, the, uses the x value and our x is negative. So I'm going to choose the negative sign here because we're in quadrant two and we're dealing with uh, the x coordinate. So our final answer secant is negative, uh-oh. No, that's right, yeah, it's the x. Secant is negative two. All right, so that is our reference angle example in quadrant two. I should probably label that. Pi over three is our reference angle, so 
it is theta bar. So theta bar is pi over three. Now on the quiz, I will uh, also ask not just for secant of two pi over three, but what is the reference angle as well? So I wanna know what is the shortest angle back to the x-axis? A really good way for partial credit is draw a good picture. If I can see that uh, maybe you got the wrong angle here, but you at least knew it was uh, the angle going from um, our second quadrant angle back to the x-axis. Maybe you just got the numbers wrong over here. Uh, you can get partial credit just for your unit circle and what you've drawn inside of it. So we'll do another example. And I don't want to repeat too many. We did, let's see, we did a quadrant four right here. If I just come back here, our example from two classes ago, just relabeling pi over three is our theta bar. And that was in quadrant four, what you need to do is figure out um, what is a corresponding angle up here in quadrant one. If it's a small negative angle, we just make it uh, positive. Eight pi over three, we had to, what I call, we had to kind of unwind our angle. It turned out to be the same thing, same reference angle as a problem we just did. And our first example, we did a quadrant three right here. So in quadrant three, our reference angle is the positive angle to the x-axis, which five pi over four, four pi over four, it's very easy to see this reference angle is pi over four, which shows up uh, right here. So here's our pi over four written in standard position where it, where it should be drawn. And I just made that uglier. So let me undo that and we'll just leave it in the wrong color. So there are occasions where you have a choice for uh, your reference angle. Uh, it turns out either choice it, when there is a choice, either choice will be correct. So let's go with uh, three pi over two. So given theta is three pi over two, we wanna find uh, our reference angle. All right, three pi over two. We are in halves now. So instead of pi, I'll write this as two pi over two. So from here, it's pretty easy to see where three pi over two is. So we go pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two is right at the bottom. So that is three pi over two, I'm gonna label it. I'm gonna do something sort of annoying. And label it up here, three pi over two. We're gonna make our other measurements in blue. So it should be distinct from this three pi over two. All right, now here there's not really a, I don't need to draw an extra angle. You can if you want to make this extra bold right here, but we're going right along the uh, negative uh, y axis. Now I can write the coordinates for this point down right away. That's actually really nice. There's four points on the unit circle that are super easy. This is one of the four. So this has x coordinate zero, y coordinate negative one. Uh, because I can write these down right away, I could find any trig function of this point very easily. So for example, if I was asked tangent uh, three pi over two, this is tangent y over x. Hopefully I don't make mistakes today because nobody's gonna correct me. Well, probably in the YouTube comments, somebody will correct me. Uh, tangent will be y over x. And let's see, our y is zero, x is negative one. 
and we get zero. So tangent would be zero. Now what about cotangent? Cotangent x over y, no problem so far. X is negative one, y is zero. Oh, that's a problem. Okay, we're dividing by zero, which you're not allowed to do. Uh, when you do so, at least in this class, uh, you're gonna write that as undefined. And on web work, I believe they want you to write it as undef. So that will be uh, anytime you divide by zero for your trig value, which will happen uh, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Any of those, you could be divided by zero in different places. You want to make sure you write as undefined. Undefined, very specifically, is not zero. So one over zero, negative one over zero, those are not equal to zero. So do not write uh, that equals zero, even though you might say, oh, look, there's a zero. Yes, but that is uh, not the zero that we, that zero, it means this is not a number. So this is undefined, an undefined quantity. So I talked about reference angles, but never actually got our reference angle for three pi over two. So I sort of avoided it by just saying, well, this angle is very easy to uh, write down the coordinates for. If we want the reference angle, there is one problem with our definition, which is, which way should I go to the x-axis? So let's go the natural positive way, and right there is pi over two. That's the shortest distance to the x-axis. Is that the only shortest distance to the x-axis? No, there's another shortest distance to the x-axis. I could have done the same thing over here. And what is that angle? Also, pi over two. So which one is correct? Both. You can use either one for uh, three pi over two. So three pi over two, you could use pi over two, or you could use pi over two as your reference angle. It's your choice. Either way, you're using pi over two, so it's actually the same thing. The only other place this could happen is the positive y-axis, but if you are on the positive y-axis, uh, you don't really need a reference angle. Uh, again, because I didn't really need a reference angle on this problem, I, I just wrote down the uh, coordinates right away. So I think that will be enough uh, review of the reference angle. And again, I put this into 10.2 not 10.3, uh, not a huge deal where, where you write this in your notes uh, as long as you remember it. So we're gonna get back to uh, our identities now. We just covered our Pythagorean identities and we put them in the box here to memorize. So you're gonna find that there is quite a few things that you do need to memorize in this class it may seem uh, overwhelming at first. Hopefully you'll do enough problems that it at some point will not be overwhelming and right when it starts to feel completely overwhelming, uh, I will give you uh, a formula sheet. However, it won't actually have formulas until another, I'd say week or so. So you still need to keep memorizing. I will let you know as soon as I write down the first formula that you do not need to memorize anymore. Uh, I believe on Canvas, I already have that formula page up. It's not worth looking at because it won't have anything that we've done so far. Uh, so as soon as it's worth looking at, I will uh, tell you exactly where to find it. But until then, and um, even after then, there are lots of things you need to memorize. So I will be very uh, obvious about what you need to memorize, and this is one of those things in the box. It's generally whatever I put in, inside of a box. So we did an exact value problem. Let's do a... We'll do an algebra problem here, and then we'll do some geometry next. Go back to our uh -oh, black marker. So 
So we'll start out with a given sine theta is one third and cosine theta is less than zero. So we wanna know what quadrant is theta in What quadrant is theta in? That ends in a preposition. What quadrant contains theta? And then find some exact values. We already know sine, it was given. So let's find cosine and tangent. We don't, I'm not asking to find theta itself. We are, I, I wanna know some information, which is what quadrant does theta live in? All right, sine is positive and cosine is negative. So we will use the fact that sine is one third soon, but right now I just am using the fact that sine theta is greater than zero. So let's think about where is sine theta is greater than zero. So sine is a y coordinate. So that means I could be in quadrant one or two. And I'll go with the blue and I want to write cos theta less than zero in blue. So what quadrants? Cosine theta is x and x is less than zero. So that we could be in x is negative in two and three. So where is sine positive and cosine negative? Quadrant two is our winner. So our angle has to live in quadrant two. So sine is positive, that puts us in the top half. Cosine is negative, that puts us on the left half. So what's in common is the upper left quadrant right there, quadrant two. So our answer is two for the quadrant. You do not have to use Roman numerals. I absolutely will take uh, uh, Arabic numerals for two, whichever ones you want to write. I believe web work generally takes uh, regular Arabic numerals, Roman numerals get annoying, although going to three is not bad. All right, cos theta. How in the world do we figure out cosine theta? I could, the only thing I really know about cosine theta at this moment is it's less than zero. So it's gonna be negative, but how negative? Well, sine theta is one third. So how do I relate sine and cosine together? So we're gonna scroll up until I find an equation with, oh, there we go, sine and cosine. It is the first equation on this list. Cos squared plus sine squared equals one. So we know cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. And from here, we are going to use our one third for sine. So I know sine theta is one third. And here's a good time to rewrite using more obvious exponential notation. So I'm just gonna put one third where I see sine. One third squared is one ninth. And one ninth, one minus one ninth, we're subtracting. So that is nine ninths minus one ninth. And I'm so used to writing with that exponential notation, I'm gonna fall back into that probably almost the entire rest of the quarter. So nine ninths minus one ninth is eight ninths. And of course this is cos squared theta. So I square root both sides, cos theta equals plus or minus square root eight ninths, which I can write as square root eight over square root nine, which of course is three, plus or minus, I have to choose, and it's not really a choice, right here, cos is less than zero. So I'm not really choosing, I'm more following directions. Negative, they said cos is negative, Cos is negative, negative eight, negative. 
square root 8 over 3. Now, can you simplify square root 8? No. Can you write it as 2 times square root 2? Yes. Uh, but because I can't get rid of the uh, square root 2, uh, is there's not neither of these forms are superior. I'd say they're equivalent. Uh, square root 9, please, you should know that it is 3 at this point in your life. Uh, as for square root 8, it doesn't simplify down that nicely, so I would accept either form for the answer there. All right, we got cosine. What about tangent? I want tangent. I know sine. I know cosine. Can I relate sine, cosine, and tangent together? So here's our Pythagorean identities. We got cosine, sine together, tangent, secant, cotangent, cosecant. That doesn't match cosine, sine, and tangent in one equation. So let's keep going up, 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 up. Basic identities. Tangent equals sine over cosine. I know sine, I know cosine, so we're going to use this right here. Tangent is sine over cosine. Sine theta is one third. Cos theta is negative square root 8 over 3. If you're wondering which do I prefer, square root 8 or 2 square root 2, uh, square root of 8 takes less writing. So I would say that is, uh, in my opinion, preferred. Now when it comes to square root 9 versus 3, uh, square root 9 is more writing than 3 is. So certainly 3 is better than square root 9. Uh, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Do not forget there's a negative sign hanging out. Threes cancel, negative one over square root eight. That's our answer there. And there's our cosine answer. Okay, so we just started out with some information on sine and a tiny bit of information on cosine. And we got to cosine and tangent value. And of course, what quadrant our angle was in. So this was a lot of algebra here. We're gonna shift gears into geometry now. So this is geometry and the non-unit circle. Uh, this works on unit circles too, but Everything we've talked about in tricks so far was on the unit circle. So it assumed our radius was 1. So now our radius is not necessarily 1. So the mnemonic, the memory device uh, we use is SOHCAHTOA in general. So I'll put this inside of a box. Good thing to memorize this. That should be an H, not an N. SOHCAHTOA. All right, this is uh, representing, I don't like to write sine first, but the mnemonic has sine first in it, so we're just gonna go with it. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, A stands for adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is uh, opposite over adjacent. Now you do need a right angle. It does have to have a right angle in it, uh, but you don't need to have uh, your hypotenuse as one. Also, you triangle doesn't need to be lined up perfectly with the x-axis or y-axis or, or any axis in particular. So let me draw a triangle that's sort of askew. Does need to be a right triangle though. So I need to be careful and make sure there's one right angle in it. So that angle is supposed to be a right angle. As far as where theta goes, it can go either place. If I draw theta right here, uh, opposite, so which side is opposite? That should be pretty obvious. There's only one side you could consider opposite. Now adjacent, which side is adjacent? 
That's a little more tricky. There are two adjacent sides. However, one of the adjacent sides has a special name. The side that is opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. And because that's a hypotenuse, we use the word adjacent for the other side. So adjacent, there's two adjacent sides, but we only call this one adjacent uh, because the one, the other adjacent side, we actually call the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse, if hypotenuse equals one, you don't really have to divide by one, nor do you have to divide by one here. So when your hypotenuse is one, sine equals opposite, cosine equals adjacent. And if you are lucky enough to have your triangle lined up on the x-axis perfectly, you will see you got one, theta, right angle, uh, opposite will equal y, your y value of that point. So this point is x comma y, and your adjacent will equal x. So this is on the unit circle. So this is review right here, just connecting this back. So I usually put a cloud around things if it's something uh, that we talked about in the past. So just to review something really quickly, it's not new. This is not where you should be memorizing it. You should be memorizing it back uh, a couple sections, one or two sections ago, but I'm just reviewing here how it relates to opposite adjacent. Of course, one would be the uh, hypotenuse on the unit circle. So let's go with, uh, so we'll start out, I'm gonna use geometry on this one. So this problem, there's a number of things in pre-calculus class that you can use either geometry or algebra for. I'm gonna choose, uh, I'm going to choose geometry here on this problem that we're about to do. It's going to be pretty similar to the one we just looked at. We just started with a sine, and we found cosine and tangent. And we used uh, algebra, we used the Pythagorean identities. So what we're going to do instead here is we're going to start out with similar information, and we're going to use geometry. So we're going to be given... and theta equals one half, and sine theta is less than zero. Find cos theta and sine theta. All right, so, and oh, what quadrant is theta in? All right, so I want cos theta, sine theta, and quadrant. Let's get quadrant first. All right, tangent is positive right here. Tan pos positive. What two quadrants is tangent positive? So definitely everybody's positive in quadrant one. So we got quadrant one. Now what other quadrant is tangent positive? Tangent is y over x. So how do you get a fraction to be positive? Either they're y and x are positive, quadrant one, or y and x are both negative, quadrant three. So either in one or three. Now we got sine is negative. So if I don't want to use my brain very much, I could just say, well, oh, sine negative, that's definitely not quadrant one. So that narrows it down quickly, quadrant three. Uh, the other way, sine is negative. So specifically, where is sine negative? Sine is a y. So all of our negative y's are all in the bottom half. So it could have been three or four, but because tangent put us in three, it had to be quadrant three. So I don't have to spend much time on that. Cosine and sine now. How do we get those? I could, now if I went the algebra route, Uh, which I'm only briefly going to talk about. I start out knowing about tangent, and how in the world do I get cosine and sine? So it's very tempting to say, oh, what about this? Tangent equals, so 
sine over cosine. Okay, so from here, uh, tangent is one half. It's tempting to say sine theta equals one, cos theta equals two. This is very wrong. Uh, it's not wrong because I said so. Let's think about why is it wrong. Sine theta equals one. There's only one place in the inner circle sine theta equals one. I can draw it out very easily. It's right up there. Uh, is that where we are? No, we're in quadrant three. All right, where on the inner circle does cos theta equal two? Cos theta is an x value, so there's one. There's x value two. Is that on the unit circle? X value two. No, absolutely not. That's way too big. The biggest X value I could ever get is one, and the smallest is negative one. So it doesn't make sense to have cosine theta any bigger than one. So I already crossed this out. It is wrong. I should probably cross it out in red. It is that wrong. It's not just bad. I don't want to use the word bad for things that are actually wrong. So this is wrong. That being said, some of you absolutely will give me that answer on a quiz or a midterm. Hopefully you don't, but it could happen. All right, so how do you continue from here? I could cross multiply and get cos theta equals two sine theta. So what this tells me, if I knew sine theta, cosine would be twice as big. So if I knew the value for sine, multiply by two and I would have cosine. If I knew a value for cosine, I could rewrite this algebra. One half cos theta equals sine theta. So if I knew cosine, I could cut it in half and I would have sine. The problem is I don't know either one. Oh boy, how do we relate tangent then algebraically? Tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. Secant squared is one over cos squared theta. And you would put your value in for tangent squared, or tangent, square it, uh, and then you would solve for cos theta. Uh, you gotta do a couple algebra steps here, not terribly tough. Um, I'm not gonna go that route. Right now, uh, the tricky part about it is knowing to use this formula. So let's partition this algebra root off. I want to use geometry instead. So tangent is uh, one over two. So we're using SOHCAHTOA, so I'm tan using tangent opposite over adjacent. And of course, tangent is one over two. So tangent is opposite uh, over adjacent. So y over x is another way to think about it. y over x, y is one, x is two. So there's our point. We could build up a triangle. All right, what quadrant did I just draw my triangle in? Quadrant one, which is definitely not the quadrant we should be in. So this is a wrong quadrant right here. <clears throat> so this is wrong quadrant. All right, that's out. Tan theta is y over x equals one half. Now I'm gonna do something that is not terribly obvious. One divided by two is equal to negative one divided by negative two because two wrongs make a right. You divide by negative by negative, you get a positive. All right, y will be negative one, x will be negative two. Uh, you could also think of adjacent and opposite and adjacent. So you could write opposite equals negative one, adjacent equals negative two. And we draw our Triangle out in the correct quadrant, which opposite negative one, that's our y value. Adjacent negative two, that's our x value. There's our point. 
Now we're in quadrant three. So draw, always draw to the origin. So that's where our angle would be measured from. Right there. When you draw your triangle, your triangle always goes shortest perpendicular to the x-axis. You're gonna notice, hopefully by now, everything is shortest. Uh, if it's an angle, reference angle, shortest measurement to the x-axis. If it's a uh, perpendicular line, it's the shortest uh, back to the x-axis. Do not connect your triangle to the y-axis. So this would be wrong also. So do not connect to the y-axis. So that's out too. So we have our triangle here. Let's just redraw it. A little bit nicer, we got negative two, negative one. How do I get third side? Pythagorean theorem. So I'll use H for hypotenuse. H squared equals uh, negative one squared plus negative two squared. Make sure your negative squared to be positive. Two, negative two squared is positive four. So H squared equals five. H equals plus or minus square root five. Your hypotenuse is always positive. Hypotenuse is always positive. I know in this particular case, our hypotenuse pointed, you could consider it pointing in a very negative direction because it points down to the left, but no matter what, your hypotenuse is always positive. So now we have hypotenuse. Uh, we have hypotenuse is square root five. So I'll just rewrite that here. Hypotenuse equals square root five, and we can write down somewhere cosine and sine. So cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So adjacent was negative two over square root five, and for sine, we had negative one is opposite over square root five. So there's our final answers for cosine and sine. So I need to end it here. So I have enough time for my slow internet to successfully upload. And then YouTube needs some time to process. And hopefully it will all be finished before class actually starts. And again, we got a quiz tomorrow. And I think we have no school Monday.